you. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. Uh, All right, uh, so what I'm going to talk about is actually the, the results, and it's half of the results of one of my PhD students, uh, Samir Elias. Um, she was working uh, at our uh, university for five years, and um, she, she brought, at the beginning, um, an interesting research question about uh, urbanity and how uh, should uh, uh, urbanity uh, um, be thought about. And, and I asked her to define urbanity, which is something possibly a, a little bit ambiguous to, to define. And, um, and she, she, she was always uh, talking about uh, a good space, nice city space, the place where people like to meet, and something that she was uh, uh, finding in Lisbon and obviously not seeing in Brazil because they have different types of uh, uh, social space and, 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 and social conditions. Um, so, okay. So at a certain point we got to this uh, question which is poss possibly the most important question she has in the in the thesis, uh, which is, is there a determining relationship between urban form and urbanity? In other words, is there a set of conditions that, if exist, define urbanity? And which ones are really determining to do, to do that? Um, she doesn't, she doesn't reach uh, an answer to this question in, in, uh, in the thesis, but all the process and methodology is actually quite interesting, and there was a lot of learning in the process. And at a certain point, we selected a set of topics to, uh, um, to work on related uh, with urban qualities. Things that we could measure uh, are related to urban form, and can be used to understand if we are reaching a certain level of urbanity or not. And we talked about uh, building areas, so the dimensions of buildings, perimeter of blocks, network density, uh, openings in the facade, uh, the, the percentage of res residential buildings in, in certain areas, the mix of uses, how does it play a, a role in, in defining this urbanity. Territorial depth, meaning uh, uh, barriers towards doors, things that we find in uh, uh, modernist structures that usually we don't find in traditional uh, uh, cities. And obviously also the network configuration, what was the role of that? And the reason why these properties were chosen is that because we could find them in, in, in in literature. But as I said, I was always insisting on uh, uh, what do we call urbanity? Can we have a, uh, at least our definition to work for? Might be discussable, but that's the t where we, we're discussing the subject. So we're talking about pleasant spaces, safe spaces, active spaces that provide quality of life, diversity, distinctiveness. Uh, uh, a city made for people to, uh, to meet, to work, to mingle and socialize. Places where people become citizens. And, and we also said that the co-presence of these qualities, that's what we would call positive urbanity. Uh, because there was also the discussion, and this is obviously a social discussion, whether we can find uh, uh, social activity and obviously some kind of urbanity in places where we may find actually negative aspects about the conditions of life and so on. We're thinking about, for instance, the, the informal spaces in Brazil 
where some authors actually claim that there are qualities, activities going on in the streets, and so on. So <clears throat> we wanted to define it in, 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 in a way that at least could have some kind of objective discussion. Also, there, were, there are problems that uh, we find nowadays in cities, very common, and especially in the case of Brazil. These pictures are taken from uh, Recife, where Samira used to live. She's not living there uh, uh, now. Uh, so this first topic about housing deficit applies to Brazil. Not Obviously, it doesn't apply in the case of uh, uh, of Europe, at, at least not in the same objective way that uh, it happens in Brazil. Um, fragmented U, U, uh, urban fabric, that uh, happens a little bit everywhere. Uh, lack of service uh, functionality, social space, spatial segregation, I would say that that's happening everywhere, even in, in Portugal. Uh, just one small comment. Uh, I have another PhD student finish, finishing a, a study on uh, um, 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 uh, how to say uh, um, closed communities or gated communities uh, in the uh, urban um, the, the, the the Lisbon urban uh, area, and the the, the findings are incredible and frightening, because everything that is being built in the past 20 years, at least in terms of surface, are essentially this model, which are anti-urban models. And, and, and it's being done in a way that is really frightening. Uh, insufficient infrastructure, inefficient accessibility, and possibly this inefficient accessibility might even be related with this uh, uh, segregated, self-segregated areas which are the gated communities. So sometimes they want to be not very accessible. But that's another issue. Okay. So the, the most important uh, practical aspect of the research was related with these uh, questions. How far is a city from achieving this positive urbanity? Can we measure that gap? between what is observed and, and some ideal. And do we need, uh, what do we need to measure? What are the indicators that express urbanity? Can we compare contexts and how? And also, how do we define this ideal? This question is going to come up again. And in the end, the main, we get again to the main question, is there a determining relationship between uh, uh, urban form and urbanity. So the hypothesis is that there are specific features in the city form that we can measure objectively through specific set of indicators and which play a determinant role um, in the generation of positive forms of urbanity. So this is the research structure. This is actually the, the, the uh, one of the slides that uh, uh, Samira has been uh, uh, using a lot, but I decided to break it down in parts. Uh, so basically she's looking into uh, a set of configurational attributes and morphological attributes to uh, evaluate the performance uh, 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 of urban space, of this quality of the urban space, and to f define how far it, it is from uh, uh, this urbanity uh, condition. And at a certain point, the idea is to evaluate uh, aspects of the urban form which are classified uh, through a classification procedure and, uh, 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 and uh, uh, check if they have any correlation with this conditions of urbanity. So as I said, I uh, divided this in, 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 in several steps. So looking at uh, uh, literature uh, on, on this topic, on how to 
measure and evaluate qualities of the urban space, we find already from the theory a lot of uh, uh, urban indicators that are proposed. And so from that, we know how to measure them because they were developed by several authors. I, I will give some examples. Um, and we can find them specific values in different urban types. But to identify which, which of them, which values specifically define this quality character is another issue. Some authors talk about certain conditions that we should observe uh, uh, in space, and those can be measured, identified, and we can find, let's say, uh, 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 a variation, of, an interval of values where we, we, we can say that this, uh, uh, this range fits this condition of, uh, uh, of urbanity and represents that, that type of performance. Others are more difficult, and we have to refine the, the, uh, the method to, to reach that. So, as I said, at a certain point, to, to, to reach the values, we should take certain uh, um, urban types as reference cases. Actually, going back here. No, it's, it's here, that's okay. Uh, we use two types of urban samples to work with. So one of the things that uh, uh, Samira wanted to, to, to study and to work uh, with was uh, some urban samples from uh, Recife. And she wanted to do this kind of analysis, but uh, at a certain point, we, we, we discussed how, how can you uh, study this if you don't have already a system of values. You have to define the system of values to compare things. And to define this system of values, uh, we picked up a set of samples but that were reference cases and did all the measures for these reference cases. So. Once we get the measures from the reference cases, of course, if the reference cases uh, uh, define a certain range of variation, we know that the adequate values are within that range. And before that and after, we have inadequate space. So it works as a, um, as a comparative uh, analysis procedure. So once we have that, we can do a, compares, a comparative evaluation with the urban samples, in this case, the samples from Recife, and check whether they are reaching these values or not, and use these observed uh, 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 values. So in, 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 in a way, the ideal values are taken from reference cases on one hand, and from literature review on the other hand, especially when the authors were very sharp on pointing out values. There was an example for that, and we will show that also. So in, uh, in terms of methodology, the first step we have to select indicators from existing literature, understand its meaning and how to measure them, establish a system of values on how to interpret the values we measure, define how to establish objectively an approxim approximation of an ideal value for an indicator, and <clears throat> for what context, and also to identify if, uh, 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 if it has a, a meaning when it is isolated, uh, of, or if it, this uh, uh, meaning requires a compound interpretation together with another indicator. Uh, and this, is, uh, this is, was a very important step for reaching an objective uh, approach to the problem. So we got <clears throat> indicators on, at the level of uh, 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 network or configuration. And basically, uh, 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 Samira took from, uh, uh, from space syntax um, theory the, the 
the, the indicators on connectivity, um, uh, normalized uh, um, angular uh, integra integration, and, and normalized choice. And also indicators from uh, building density, and these were essentially taken from uh, the space matrix uh, theory, um, which use, usually uh, uh, uses uh, uh, at least two, uh, um, uh, two indicators together, so building intensity plus ground space index, for instance. Uh, when you use both, you get a perception of the urban form, you get a kind of an urban form pattern, which doesn't happen if you look just at a single uh, indicator on, on density. Also from the same book, we took uh, network density. Spaciousness is, was also a, an interesting uh, uh, indicator because it gave some idea about uh, a relation between built space and public space. Uh, and that was an important uh, issue for the, the topic of uh, urbanity. Uh, then we, uh, we also looked, I'm going to uh, jump to the, the basement studies because we, uh, that was very, very much present on Jan Gell's uh, uh, studies on, 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 on uh, the city and, and, and the public space. Uh, things related with the tr transparency of, uh, of the facade, permeability of the facade, and the territorial depth of, uh, uh, of the facade. And uh, these things can be uh, measured objectively. They are related with uh, uh, um, uh, phenomena that uh, was already, had already been uh, pointed out by Jane Jacobs, like the safety of streets and then the uh, activity on streets, which is very much dependent on having doors and windows looking at the, uh, at the streets, the negative impacts of these territorial depths, so uh, having several steps between the street space and entering any kind of private space. Um, which is something, as I said, that happens a lot with, with modern structures. And the reason why I left population density and use to the end is that this was the polemical uh, part that we discussed a lot. Uh, and it was a, a polemical uh, uh, part because uh, there was no author uh, specifying uh, specific values for this. There were auth authors saying, well, in the center of Barcelona, you have this type of density. And we didn't know exactly what the area was being studied. So there was no, not much objectivity in the, the several authors that, uh, 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 that uh, we took. On the other hand, if we wanted to talk about uh, uh, places with this positive urbanity, we had to take uh, 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 um, nice samples, nice areas from uh, cities where we had the data and could measure the, the information. And because Samir was uh, uh, living uh, in Lisbon, she actually took data from Lisbon and uh, she visited the, the places and she got some results. And of course she got very low uh, uh, population density because mostly there are no people living in the city center or there are very few people living there. It's essentially nowadays it's a lot about tourism so it's temporary uh, uh, use. So it started discussing this, how to reach an ideal value. So we started in a different way. It started from the city form in these places, which has certain uh, uh, um, levels uh, of construction, certain density, which uh, allows for certain amount of houses, uh, discounting the, 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 um, uh, the basement areas. Uh, it has, if we discount also an ideal for uh, mixed use, and this we could find some information, uh, because there were some authors giving information about what was the ideal mixed use for uh, an area. And we're planning to write another paper 
just about this this topic how does the, the the mixed use evolve a long time in an area where you you, you find this type of activity because the tendency is to get more mi mixed use and that's and that was another thing uh, deviating the data that she was uh, getting uh, um, used from, uh, for uh, studying that, that area. So in the end, doing this approach, we would reach a kind of a potential for the area. And that was the potential uh, would be the ideal in the sense that if these areas are working OK and they have this potential, maybe the potential is the, what we want, not necessarily uh, if it is there. So it, one thing is measuring the exist existence, and if there is a pathology in the space, in a particular area, there will be a deviation from this uh, ideal. So the important thing here was not taking the existing thing as the ideal, but understanding what is the potential and what is the deviation from the potential. That might be a pathology. Okay, then in, uh, 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 at a certain point she started identifying for each of these topics what would be, okay, I'm going to finish very, very fast. Uh, she uh, started identifying what would be the uh, adequate and inadequate uh, uh, values, started mapping all the values for uh, uh, the case studies and checking uh, um, through the graphs, uh, what would be the difference between uh, uh, the different case studies. So these are for the mixed use and, and the, the population density values. So the contributions is, are essentially a methodology to establish ideas, ideal values for urban indicators that represent positive urbanity in specific contexts, methodology for comparative evaluation of urbanity between urban samples, a system of values to interpret the gap between positive urbanity as a quality that we want to achieve, and measured performance as the current performance of a study area. The method to evaluate the effort to be put on urban form, refurbishment in order to achieve a, a, a set of ideal objectives. And for future work, it still remains the main question because it requires still a bit uh, more uh, um, study. We're working on that. Uh, the use in, of indicators uh, are not uh, an exhaustive set. So more specifically, indicators focusing exclusively on uh, uh, public space quality still require attention, like space given to pedestrians. Uh, we're still missing that one. Uh, and once collecting a more extensive and comprehensive, comprehensive set of results, we may focus on uh, extrapolations for design recommendations, on urban design from scratch, and urban refurbishment. And that's all. <laughs>